Hey, Jack. Drops him. This is Frankie the Answer Edgar. Hey, this is Rashad Evans, and you listen to the MMA Fight Corner. And here we go. This is a championship fight. This is MMA Fight Corner, live on Fox Sports Radio with your hosts, Billy Mira, Phil Divide, and Joey Varner. Hey, this is Mike Goldberg, voice of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and you are listening to the MMA Fight Corner. Here we go! Here we go! Welcome to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920, Las Vegas, Nevada, and now streaming worldwide on UFCRadio.com. I am Joey Varner, joined by my partner in crime, as always, Phil Devine. Also, our very own black belt in field reporting, Heidi Fang, is joining us. And later in the show, UFC lightweight Ryan Couture will be jumping on for a phone interview. But, Phil, how are you, brother? I'm good, man. Real excited. UFC Radio taking the station worldwide. Worldwide, baby. Prime time. That's how we roll. And no better person to be in bed with when you're in MMA than the UFC. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Top of the world. Top of the world. Well, we got a great show for you today. First thing we want to jump into, of course, is... A little bit of United States of a marijuana. Did you, did you see that article? Very interesting stuff. Yeah, you know, um, it's obviously been something that we've talked about before in the past. We've seen issues. Um, marijuana is on the banned substance list the same way that steroids are and, you know, actual physically enhancing drugs as opposed to, in my opinion, I don't think it should be illegal. But I do agree with you on the fact that, and we've talked about this before, that for some people, it actually is an enhancing substance. Right. It's not one of those things like, hey, I'm going to smoke a joint and I'm going to go sit back in, in the corner of the cage, put my feet up. <laughs> it, it doesn't actually work <laughs> like that. Like you took, we talked about a guy like Nick Diaz, you know, having the social anxiety, things like that, being able to, when he lights it up, it lights him up. He, right. he, he, he actually lights, wakes up. he lights people up. Oh, he certainly does, you know, and, and that's not the type of thing you actually, for some people will look at that if you, you know, you have a guy who smokes a little weed and he sits back in his chair and goes to sleep for the night. <laughs> yeah, he, bro. yeah, brother. <laughs> Pass it. What about the argument that perhaps if you are smoking, you can probably take a punch or withstand more uh, punishment, if you will, in this, inside the cage? I, you know what? It's a valid point. And the thing is, one thing, well, well first, let's recap this. So uh, Keith Kaiser brought it up at this last hearing for the Athletic Commission that they were proposing to revisit the marijuana issue and reevaluate the uh, testosterone placement therapy issue. Um, here in Nevada, the, the, the ratios allowed for testosterone are six to one, whereas Which, everywhere else it's four to one, and for the Olympics it's one to one. Yeah, so just so people are aware, when it's a six to one or four to one, that means for six to one, you have the testosterone of six men, that's right? That's not what that means. Is that no, what, no, what, no, what does no, it no, mean? No. It's, it's what that is, yeah, because I've heard someone say that, and that's kind of an uneducated assessment. And what that means is that that's the testosterone to, um, uh, what's the what's the female one? Heidi, what's the stuff you're full of? Estrogen. Estrogen ratio. <laughs> so it's six percent. So for every one estrogen ratio, there's six testosterone. And that's that, that doesn't mean you have six times the testosterone of an average man. It just means that's how much your ratio is in comparison to the estrogen your body is producing. So it's like making a Mai Tai. It's like four parts rum plus uh, two parts pineapple and then one part grenadine to float. You know, she, you know her <laughs> Mai Tais are five part <laughs> rum, a quarter part uh, pineapple juice, and, and, and she just takes the grenadine straight back to, yeah. to wash. A Mexican Irish, it happens. <laughs> yeah, right. Her <laughs> drinks are on steroids. <laughs> but uh, so Keith Kaiser uh, mentioned bringing up the, the TRT and the and, and E reevaluating their status on marijuana and whether that means that they're going to start uh, allowing for a, thera a therapeutic use exemption for weed or they're going to legal you know allow people with prescriptions to compete he didn't he didn't go into that specifically he just said we're going to take a look at this there's been a lot of outcry especially from a lot of the fighters who are saying hey you've got guys who are are, are you know using testosterone all the time which is clearly a greater performance enhancer than marijuana um and for them it's arguable as to not whether or not marijuana is a performance enhancer at all but they're saying hey why can't we use weed why can't i use weed man just weed man you in here for some weed? <laughs> I, I suck for yeah, weed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'll tell you. It's one of those things where, you know, it's 100% correct that it is such a touchy subject. And it is. It's a different 
type of enhancement for some people. And we talked about the Nick Diaz thing. But, I mean, do you remember a few months ago Dana White and one of the scrums that he did after, uh, I, I don't remember which UFC it was, but when, when the weed issue came up, because let's be honest, I mean, we're just seeing it again. You know what happened with Matt Riddle. Um, uh, Ricky Fukuda was some other stuff. Uh, Bruce Leroy was for weed just now. We just found out that he tested positive. So more and more fighters it's happening to, okay? And more and more fighters, maybe it's because of the fact of not being able to recover, all right, the same way. Sometimes they come home from the gym, they're beat up, they're sore, they smoke a joint, they relax, they go to sleep, okay? But when you, when you have, like, uh, I think Dana said in the scrum, I have 480 guys on contract, and if I tested every single one of them, I guarantee about 400 of them would pop positive for marijuana. Oh, yeah. I, I, so listen, and, and, and I, listen, this is not 1930. It's not reefer madness. We're in a different time and era. <laughs> I mean, look, what happens when you go to Colorado and you have a fight in Colorado and marijuana is legal? Not only legal where you can just go ahead and you can buy it in a store. You can sit inside a restaurant and light that sucker up. Dude, check this out. I was in Colorado recently. I go out there and I comment at Ring of Fire, so I'm always out there. Driving down Colorado Boulevard, the main street, Every 500 feet, there's a weed shop. And I just heard this crazy, crazy, crazy statistic. I can't even say crazy statistic. Uh, but this crazy statistic that there are more weed shops, head shops, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, weed dispensaries in Colorado than coffee shops. Absolutely. And in fact, actually, if you drive through, uh, listen, we're here in Vegas. Uh, a, lot of things, a lot of things happen always going on. You drive down the strip and you see... I don't know, 100 guys with, with signs, advertising, stores, or things like that. In Colorado, they have that for weed. They actually have guys that hold the big giant signs with an arrow, and it says weed, <laughs> and they play their tricks. They're spinning them. But I mean, I'm like, I remember driving there. I was like, wait a second. I'm from New York City. I'm pretty sure they don't advertise that way there. <laughs> you, 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 know, <laughs> you know what's funny is you drive down the street here and you see the guys, like, they're holding the sign for the furniture store and they're spinning it and they're doing flips with it and they're rotating. But in Colorado, you see the guy with the weed sign and he's just kind of standing there, you know. No. <laughs> he's just high. He's too high to spin it. But see, there we go. Enhancing. Those guys are spinning that thing just like they do here. Right. Oh, yeah. They're acrobatic with that stuff. They're doing flips. They're, they're getting creative uh, with it. Uh, so what happens? Like, we had, I know, um... I don't actually. That's not. Even, I don't even want to mention fighters' names or anything like that. But one of them during a, a test recently, you know, went and said, "Hey, listen. I just want you to know, I've been training in Colorado. You know, I can't go to a restaurant without somebody next to me smoking a joint." Now and that is that is an exaggeration it, because it's it, only allowed in designated areas, it, which are the specific coffee it shops. It is, but when you're when you're walking around town and everybody, I mean, you but smell it. You out, smell it everywhere. Out. When was the last time you were in Colorado? I was there for 150. Frankie, okay, so it wasn't legal. Then. It wasn't legal. I've been then. There, and it was I've still been, everywhere. <laughs> I've been, I've been there many times, and and I do have a lot of uh, of friends who like to indulge in the greenery. If you know what I'm talking about, I, I like have to, no idea like what you're puff, talking they about. They like to <laughs> puff the peace pipe, um, and it's not everywhere. It is everywhere in the sense that you see a lot of weed shops, you see people, you see a lot of stoners. But I went to plenty of restaurants, and I didn't ever see anyone smoking up right next to me. I mean, I'm in the malls, I'm walking around and hanging out. I don't see anyone smoking up. Now, you're at a bar at night and wafting through the air more than cigarette smoke. I do smell the, 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 the herbal essence floating through the air, tantalizing my nose, my, my taste buds and my in my nostrils, but it's not everywhere. It, it's visually, you can see, you're aware of its presence, you're aware it's there, but it's it's definitely not, I'll tell you this much, I can smell more cigarette smoke in public in Colorado than I can weed smoke. Wow, we hang out with the different people. No, but here's the point though, making this, whether or not the, whether or not the athletic commission uh, app approves this or not, it's one of these tough things, and I'd like to see how they, how they do, how they do approve it, because you can't fight drunk, you can't fight high. You're not allowed to come in and fight high. So is it like, um, you know, you can, th the amount in your blood or how much metabolites you test positive for is okay? It's, is it going to be a ratio system just like the, the, the testosterone or replacement therapy? I don't know. Um, it's going to be interesting to see the way they do it. It's going to be interesting to find out. Um, but also, some other crazy stuff, crazier than even weed, for the first time in the history of the Ultimate Fighter, next season, Tough 18, Two women will be coaching. Not just that, the contestants are going to be female and male. That, uh, that's insane. Absolutely insane. And I know we just got off of the weed, 
All right. I know we just got off the weed, but I feel like I was really on the weed when I heard this announcement. Why? <laughs> hey, because it's two women? No, not the two women, because Heidi, and, and I know that you had actually brought this up a few times, and I know we were questioning when it was announced, hey, did Dana just steal your idea there? But it, it's true that um, I have no issue with, with either whoever the winner of Kate, uh, Kat Zingano and Misha Tate, whoever the winner is. So here it is. It's, 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 it's current women's 135-pound uh, champ, Ronda Rousey, will be coaching versus either Misha Tate or Kat Zingano. They will be fighting at the Ultimate Fighter 17 finale taking place here in Las Vegas in MGM Arena uh, in two weeks from now. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an awesome show. And whoever wins that fight will get the opportunity to coach as the other first ever female coach on the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, th and that's not what shocked me because I think it's it's well it's deserved and it is needed and you know that Ronda Rousey based on you know the last pay-per-view she was in she's one of the top fives of all time uh, you know not all time right uh, now she's right. the top five draw well, it's still she's been in f over 400,000 view uh you know buys that's a lot that is a lot of people buying your pay-per-view all right and so they're they're marketing on it at the right time it's the mixed house that has me a little that's how is my this going to happen how do you have guys because that's always been the thing you've seen this year uh, obviously we know this year the ultimate fighter is the best that there's been and, but you see Chael has been able to get you know giving guys phones they, they're able to have contact with their family it's not like they're confined like they've been in the past but you put guys and, and girls in a house and that's all they i mean there's there's no tv there's no radio there's no there's no books it's there's crazy. no music there's booze fighting and lord and of the flies yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what goes hand in hand with booze and fighting well, you know, I don't really want to go there. I'm, I'm trying uglies. to give people the benefit of the doubt that we can all be professionals and I'm work with together. You. I'm with you on that. I'm with you, and I like that. But tell me one reality show where there's been male and female living in the same house where uglies were not bumped. Big well, brother. They weren't all <laughs> fighters, though, that are training to get a six-figure contract. Okay, who has a higher testosterone level and sex drive on the face of this earth than a fighter? Both male and female. Like, they're going to have to really... This is... this is. Let me ask you this. Do you think the UFC is playing with fire on this one? Oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's going to be interesting. I'm, def I'm really excited to see the way it's going to play out because they're going to have to, like, se separate the house. There's going to have to be a guy's side and a woman's side. I mean, they're going to have to do that. It'll, It'll be, be a like big G.I. Line. Jane, <laughs> where they put her in that separate one bathroom or right, whatever. Right. So. We're going to see the next woman's champ shaving her head in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. Going all ready for Navy SEALs or something like that. Who knows? But Yeah, definitely interesting. It's, it's definitely interesting. It's going to be intense. And what do you think about the, the Misha Tate Kat Zingano fight? Now, for the Tough 18 reality show just coming out, out the gates, better TV would be Misha Tate and, and Ronda Rousey. They don't like each other. They're both outspoken about that. They've already fought. Misha wants the champ. She wants that title belt back. Or, or excuse me, she wants a title. Um, so, uh, you know, it's it's... That there's the TV, there's the story in this. We don't know much about Kat Zingano, but we're gonna get back to that. We gotta go pay some bills. Do not go anywhere. Don't touch that dial. You're listening to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports 920 in Las Vegas, Nevada, and now streaming worldwide on UFCRadio.com. MMA Fight Corner. back it's going to be more talk about you know obviously phil's this week in MM, uh, mma history but you know continue off from where you were say okay we just you know we were just done talking about you know tough 18 you know male and you know female thing this is this is just let's just finish that subject yeah, up. and then such a fun thing, it's a historic know? event and then we can say speaking of history bang and boom. exactly and that's exactly how we want to do that we want to lead into that uh kind of a thing so yeah now outside of brockman you guys haven't had